I met Paul and said, do you want to join me band, you know? And then George joined. And then Ringo joined. We were just a band who made it very, very big, that's all. Hello there. My name's Scott, and welcome to Dig a Podcast, a show in which I give you an in-depth story behind the songs sung by the best band there is, was, and ever will be, the Beatles. In this season, season two, we work our way through the album Meet the Beatles, or our UK listeners know it as With the Beatles. Meet the Beatles is the second Beatles album released in the United States. It was the first US Beatles album to be issued by Capitol Records on 20th January 1964 in both mono and stereo formats. It topped the popular album chart on the 15th of February 1964 and remained at number one for 11 weeks before being replaced by the Beatles' second album. The cover featured Robert Freeman's iconic portrait of the Beatles used in the UK for the With The Beatles with a blue tint added to the original stark black and white photograph. So let's continue the in-depth story behind the songs with song number 9 from the With The Beatles LP 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 Till There Was You The significance of Till There Was You in the Beatles recorded canon appears to be infinitesimally small to the most Beatles fans, many not having knowledge of them even recording the song. In fact, some song sheet music books which claim to include all the released Beatles material omit the song. Not because of its being a cover song, but simply because they forgot to include it. The truth of the matter is that the song was a major determining factor in the Beatles being signed to EMI's Parlophone Records in Britain, thereby catapulting them to fame throughout the world. If it wasn't for the Beatles adding Till There Was You to their repertoire, they no doubt would have had the same fate of most of the beat groups of the Liverpool's music scene, such as Cass and the Casanovas, Derry and the Seniors, and Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. January 1st, 1962 was a monumental day in the Beatles' career. Brian Epstein had arranged an audition for the band at Decca Records, and had handpicked 15 songs for them to perform in their studio. Brian's intent was to show off every facet of their talent, so he chose to include a couple of soft ballads for the attempt of appealing to a more adult audience. The entire audition was recorded on that day to enable the A&R staff to review the recordings in making the decision about signing the group to their record label. In early February of that year, the news reached the ears of Brian Epstein that Decker had decided not to sign the Beatles to their label. When the Beatles heard this news, John Lennon blamed Brian for their failing the audition saying that his choice of songs was not a good representation of the Beatles' live rock and roll performances. Nonetheless, one good outcome of the Decca auditions was Brian Epstein acquiring two reel-to-reel tapes of the audition, which were professional recordings of the 15 songs the Beatles played on that day. Brian decided to transfer these tapes to records, which would enable him to easily play these songs to other record companies in hopes of securing a recording deal with them. On February 13th, Brian met with George Martin, who was the head of A&R at EMI's Parlophone Records. Martin, who was looking for the next pop idol to be secured to his small label, eagerly listened to the discs of the Decca auditions. Although not overly impressed, Till There Was You stuck out like a sore thumb. He was impressed by George Harrison's guitar work, as well as McCartney's vocals, which earmarked Paul as a possible lead singer of the group in George Martin's mind. He concluded that it might be worth his while giving the Beatles a proper audition for EMI, which was eventually slated for June 6th. As it turned out, John Lennon was wrong in this case. It was the inclusion of the soft ballad Till There Was You that got them the audition with EMI, which led them to signing up 
for the Parlophone label. This event, in turn, gave them the chance to show what they could do as performers and songwriters, which, shortly thereafter, made the Beatles a household name around the world. The power that this song and the Beatles' performance of it wielded was remembered by Brian Epstein, as it was wheeled out on different strategic occasions when they were in a position to impress, such as the Royal Command performance on November 4th, 1963, and their first Ed Sullivan show appearance on February 9th, 1964. Another occasion which warranted the song being showcased was the recording of their second British album with the Beatles. With their huge backlog of cover songs contained in their set lists for the past few years, it was given that they would eventually include the impressive song which basically got them their recording contract in the first place. Songwriting History To The With You was written by composer, songwriter, conductor and playwright Meredith Wilson, specifically for his Tony Award and Grammy Award winning musical The Music Man. Meredith, born Robert Meredith Reiniger, attended Juilliard in New York City, back when it was called the Institute of Musical Art and became accomplished as a flutist and a piccolo player. He was privileged to be a member of John Philip Sosa's band between 1921 and 1923, and then the New York Philharmonic Orchestra between 1924 and 1929. Meredith started working for movies shortly thereafter, garnishing Academy Award winning nominations for his work on Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator in 1940, as well as The Little Foxes in 1941. During World War II, he worked with Armed Forces Radio Service, which teamed him up with George Burns, Gracie Allen and Bill Goodwin. He earned a regular spot on the Burns and Allen radio show, as well as serving as their band leader. After the war, he became the musical director for a comedy variety show entitled The Big Show, which featured Tallulah Bankhead as its host. May the good Lord bless and keep you was the title of the famous song that Meredith wrote as featured in this program. Meredith wrote a total of four musicals in his life. The first was the most successful being The Music Man, which premiered on Broadway in 1957. Taking eight years and 30 revisions to complete, he wrote over 40 songs for the musical including Till There Was You. The song was so highly regarded that it was actually released as a single before the musical hit Broadway. Promotional copies of the single were released on November 26, 1957, which was produced by Nelson Riddle and sung by 17-year-old Sue Ranney. The cast recording the album for the musical, released in January of 1958, won the first Grammy Award for the category Best Original Cast Album. Broadway or TV ever issued. The album contains Till There Was You, sung by actress Barbara Cook. The musical was adapted to the big screen in 1962 and featured Shirley Jones singing the song. Another three more musicals, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Here's Love and 1491, he continued his career in music, releasing an album entitled and then I wrote The Music Man, credited to Rinnie and Meredith Wilson on Capitol Records, as well as writing the University of Iowa's fight song, For I, For S, Forever. He also wrote two biographies, And There I Stood With My Piccolo, in 1948, and But He Doesn't Know the Territory, in 1959. Having died on June 15th, 1984, he was most known as a songwriter of well-crafted, subtle yet complex melodies that appealed to mass audiences of his day. His overall claim to fame is his writing the book, music and lyrics to the Broadway hit musical The Music Man, which featured the beautiful Till There Was You. 
The song, written especially for the musical, is a vehicle for the female lead character Marion to sing to the male lead character Harold as they meet at the agreed spot at the footbridge. Marion proceeds to tell Harold the difference he's made in her life through the lyrics of this song. The song has been recorded by many artists, including the hit version by Anita Bryant, which peaked at number 30 on the US Billboard charts in 1959. The version of the song that caught the attention of Paul McCartney was the rendition by Peggy Lee as recorded on the album Latin a la Lee, which was released in January of 1960. Paul was reportedly introduced to this version of the song through his older cousin Elizabeth Denher, now Robbins. I didn't know that it was from a musical, The Music Man, until many years later, Paul McCartney claimed although he must have found that out by the time of the Royal Variety performance on November 4th, 1963, since he announced to the audience that it was from that musical. Peggy Lee's version, with its jazz-styled lead guitar, became the basis for the Beatles' rendition of the song. Paul skillfully rearranged the song to suit their four-piece guitar, bass, drums lineup and respectfully performed the song with its Broadway-esque sentimentality in the convincing and confident way. The enormously successful singer Peggy Lee continued to have an admirer in Paul McCartney, who wrote and produced the title track to her 1974 album Let's Love. Recording History January 1st, 1962, the first day the Beatles entered a recording studio to record Till There Was You, was actually the first time the Beatles entered any proper recording studio at all. This was their audition for Decca Records at Decca Studios in London, which was less than two miles from the EMI studios where they were to acquire their official contract later in the year. Manager Brian Epstein undoubtedly handpicked till there was you for this audition to display the versatility of the group. Since the hour-long session began at 11am and they recorded a total of 15 songs in this hour, this third song was recorded at approximately 11.10am. It seems quite likely that only one take of each song was performed on this day, so their being so well acquainted with the song came in handy. The subdued drumming of current drummer Pete Best was unsteady and rudimentary, which didn't suit the arrangement. Although McCartney's vocals were respectful and convincing, right down to the raised final note. Harrison's guitar solo, which was repeated twice at this stage, was polished and highly impressive. Having failed the Decca audition, the second studio appearance of the song was July 18th, 1963, at EMI Studio 2, during their first recording session for their second British album, With The Beatles. At approximately 10pm, the Beatles ran through three takes of the song, two of them complete, before deciding to return to the song on another day. The instrumentation was the same as the Decca session a year and a half earlier, this time with Ringo playing his part on his full drum kit. July 30th, 1963 was the keeper date. Studio 2 at EMI was the location for this full day of recording for their second album. The evening session ran from 5 to 11 p.m., which, after George Merton's overdubbed piano edit pieces for Money, That's What I Want, the Beatles started their remake of Till There Is You. It was decided, probably by George Martin, that drums were too obstructive for this ballad. So Ringo was moved to a pair of bongos, courtesy of the EMI collection. The remake of the song ran from approximately 5.30 to 6pm, needing five takes to perfect, which were numbered 4 through 8, taking into account the three takes of the previous session. The arrangement was modified 
from their Decca audition to have only one guitar solo, which also emulated the need for a further repeat of the bridge and final verse. Take 8 was deemed the best, which was a full band performance with no overdubs or fading needed. August 21st saw the mono mix of the song, which was attended only by George Martin and engineers Norman Smith and Jeff Emmerich in Studio 2 of EMI. This is the mono mix heard on the mono version of Meet the Beatles in the US. October 29th saw the stereo mix of the song performed in Studio 3 with the same EMI staff present, with an addition of the mysterious BT as the second engineer. This is the stereo mix heard on the stereo version of Meet the Beatles. The Beatles did touch on the song one more time on January 10th, 1969, during the recording filming session for the Get Back Let It Be project. This took place at Twickenham Film Studios, but did not appear in the movie or soundtrack album. Thanks for listening to Dig a Podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other podcasting platform. This has been a Team Wilco production. Until next time, if you know what I mean. Do I do? No? Okay.